Whew. Man, I'm a little bit out of breath. I've just been moving something around right here. I'll show y'all in a second. But first, I have to apologize. I didn't record the last few hours of work, but wasn't anything too crazy. Just cleaning up the valve covers, stuff like that, patching it all up and bolting it all together. So I'm gonna show y'all right now. And I guess I'll just start the time lapse, but it's pretty crazy. Okay, so here it is. We got it made it to the T56. It's a little bit, I guess it's rocking right now, but I'm, I'm gonna put it in the unit bay right now. And we're gonna go from there and see what the mounting options, what mounting options we'll have. So yeah, I guess y'all see that right here in a second. Well, it took me some fighting, <laughs> a little bit of hammering and kind of having to think about the geometry of the shape of the motor and how it fit in the bay here. And this isn't one of those scenarios where it's like you're fitting a, a square peg into a round hole. This fits really nicely, to be honest. <coughs> in some of my research, I determined that People who would try to automatic swap these, they would have difficulty getting room for the automatic trans. Well, the T56 is a much smaller trans than basically a lot of other ones, such as the 480, which is a larger four-speed automatic General Motors trans. But with this setup here, it seems to fit pretty well. And I'll just kind of show you all around here. Um, it looks like I can go back several more inches, but it. It looks at home in there, to be honest. It looks like it makes sense. So yeah, I'll show you right here. So it's actually sitting on the craw the subframe right now. And um, let me get some light out. There's room for the header. I think I'll get some room down past the, uh, the steering column there. But we have it really low right now. Um, And probably come to the passenger side a little bit more. <sighs> These two bolts um, here and here, that's where the engine mount would normally go on a stock like Silverado or Tahoe. And that's our Lexus motor mount. So I do need to get this to come back. Uh, a little bit more. So I guess we can try that right now. There we go. Like, oh yeah. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> what I'm gonna do actually, we need to get this under here. I don't know if I can do it with one hand, but we'll see. Ah. Uh-oh. There's our drive shaft. Oh, it's definitely hitting. Okay, good, we got it up there. That's not level, but it'll be, it'll be good enough. Looks like the train's a little bit too far this way, so I'm gonna just tug it. Really? Okay. Yep. A little bit straighter. Yeah, I don't know if I'm hidden on something. Can't tell. Oh yeah, definitely saw that. There we go. <sighs> okay, so still got wiggle. Okay. 
that's about probably all we can do there. I wonder what my harmonic balancer looks like when I get it on next to the sway bar. Well, this be. But it seems like just with our oil pan here, I'm gonna have to come forward with it just a little bit. Let's see. What's that? There we go. Oh, it's hidden again. No, it's hidden. Okay. Yeah. I can hear it. Let's see if I can tug it here. There we go. So, if I get tug. Yeah, it seems like it's going to live around there somewhere. We can hop in the driver's seat, see how much room we have. Okay, I'm gonna put you down there. So that's the shifter kind of box right there. How many inches that is. Away from our area, but if I can't feel it. Oh wow, that's actually pretty close. So it's only like like right around there. That's only like, I don't know, just a few inches. Even the drive shaft, it seems like we won't have to get it shortened that much, which is very nice to be honest. <laughs> but man, ooh boy, man, this is gonna be fun. So no, seriously, I'm, I'm, I was worried that the shifter was going to be, like, way that way. Like I said, it's literally just right here. So, somewhere back here is my center console. So, like, come on. The center console is going to look like that. It's, like, literally perfect for a manual. <laughs> like, that shit's going to look fucking perfect, like, right in here. So, very nice. Ugh. A Nakamichi sound system going to. <laughs> so, very cool. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to make this, I guess, the recap. I don't even know if it's going to be a recap. It's going to be an addition to some footage I've already recorded. But the oil pan I, I got for this motor, it works. Like, the motor is in there. Like, good enough for most people. But I just wanted a certain orientation and in a certain position and height. And because of that reason, I'm actually going to... Uh, I've already already purchased oil pan. It's in my house, and I just need to swap it out. So I'm gonna swap out that oil pan real quick, and then I need to get on mount. I need to get on to fabricating the mounts immediately because unfortunately my day, daily driver I blew a head gasket, in. so I'll need to replace cars. And so that's actually good, at least for y'all, because it's a motiv motivating factor for me to kind of get this initial stage of fabrication completed. So um, hopefully, like. I think I'm gonna go ahead and include it in the same video, but we're gonna mount, we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna fabricate weld the engine mounts, and we're also gonna fabricate and mount the transmission. And then I can get this car out of here uh, just for the time being, and then knock out the head gaskets on the other vehicle and bring this one back in. So, but once that's done, I mean, it's just really plumbing and wiring. So, um, it, it feels like it's gonna be wrapping up. So, um, yeah, we'll just get straight into the footage, I guess. First off, I have to apologize. All those times y'all saw me going under here, don't do that. I mean, do not do that at all. I'm I'm rushing here a little bit, and rushing is when you make mistakes. I really should not have been doing that, so do as I say, not as I do. But here, here's oil pan. I'm proud and happy to say 
that is definitely lower and further back. Um, I'm a little bit worried about our starter placement, how much room we're gonna have in there to get it past the mount. But what I can say now is we're very close. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here and we get some dinner. We'll pick right off in a little bit. Okay, so what y'all are about to see, probably the most disturbing and disgusting welding you've ever seen in your life. Um, but I can assure you by using my, my eye x-ray test, it looks like it'll pass. <laughs> I think for all intents and purpose, purposes, this will be fine. Um, the, let's call it the triangulation I'm going to add in here, I think will make up for the power of the 110 welder. Um, in addition to that, I have put beads on both sides of this stuff. Um, I also cut a crack in the sheet metal to bend it, or not, yeah, sheet metal, 316s but to bend it. So I filled in the crack with weld as well. So I think that'll help there. Um, and then of course, all I need is a, a piece of triangulation. I'll show you all that right now. But um, what y'all didn't see on video here, I might put some pictures in, but these do fit and I tacked them in the car where the engine needs to be. And now, like I said, just finishing them up. So after this, maybe put some black paint on them and toss them in, it's good to go. And then I need to get the transmission out, bring the trans to trans rebuilding shop because I wasn't gonna rebuild it here, but I don't really wanna spend the time to do it. And I need to get the Lexus out of here, out of this garage at least, because my other car blew the head gasket. So I think I said that in the last episode or maybe earlier in this one, but y'all will see that. Um, but man, you guys, this, not that it's taken super long it's not it's just taking some time and i figured that because this is a custom project ls and ls 400 so yeah i just just trying to make little bits of progress uh, a little bit at a time as much as i can chew so yeah So here's some disturbing welds, like I said. Oh, man, the resolution's not really right. All we see is this fucking splatter. Um, this side's a little bit better. Then we got that side. And this is probably the worst one. Um, but like I said, I think they'll be fine. Oh, and I also put some beading, like I said, in that crack. So here's where that crack would have been down this line here. So yeah, I, uh, I guess now I'm just gonna make that triangulation bracket and, and then yeah, we'll slap them in the car.